Leonardo da Vinci believed that the eye was the window to the soul and the most important of all the senses by which we experience the natural world. I want to ask everyone in the audience for just a slight moment to close your eyes. And now, just as you open your eyes to see your world, imagine your eye as the key that could unlock your world, that simply. Our eye is an incredibly powerful organ. The little black dot in the center of our eye is the pupil, the colored textured area tucks neatly behind the cornea, safe. It's called the iris. Every single one of us and every single one of our eyes has a unique combination of lines, dots, and colors. And this uniqueness is formed when we are in our mother's womb in the embryonic gestation period. And like a fingerprint, it's unique. However, unlike a fingerprint, the iris is infinitely more powerful with over 250 degrees of freedom per eye per person compared to 35 degrees of freedom for a fingerprint. When we take both the eyes together and combine them into a unique view, we're able to create a biometric template or unique identifier for a person. This scary Tom Cruise Minority Report iris scan is simply a high-res photograph, no lasers at all, of your eye when brought together, creates the foundation for identity certainty. That's important because identity is in a period of extraordinary tumult. The internet and other technologies have radically changed how we view ourselves and our constantly shifting network of friends, families, and businesses. Digital natives, even, those that were born into and raised in the digital world, move seamlessly from the online to their offline selves, and we expect to assert ourselves with ease wherever we go. Call it the audacity of self-identity, or I am whatever I say I am. However, as our lives become more mobile and our dealings less commonly face-to-face, -face, it's more important than ever that we assert our identity with confidence and ease while controlling our privacy and our own information. Right now, today, you need a bewildering assortment of passports, driver's licenses, a TED credit card, a username and password. And all of these methods, especially the username and password, provides an incredible target for thieves to steal your money and your information and your identity. Everyone in this room believes that this is important. And I would say that because statistically, for the 12th year in a row, identity theft is the number one consumer complaint. There is no place that this risk is higher than in our payments networks for our credit cards and in our banks, where last year, a whopping $210 billion of fraud hit the market globally and in turn hit all of our wallets through pass through, through charges and fees to cover that. How can we trust the financial networks that we base our entire global economy on, on systems that are continually breached and broken every single day? We hear about it every single day and yet nothing happens. Today, this is how banks protect us. But unfortunately, that protection is a false sense of security. It's the same high-tech security that my son Sam at home and I use to play Minecraft. And believe it or not, Minecraft actually has better security because they'll actually text you. Let's take an example. This seems a little bit far-fetched. So let's take this and just let's put this into some real numbers. RBS in 2008 was hacked. 1.5 million cardholders' information was stolen. It's a lot of people. The hackers raised the limits on those cards by exploiting usernames and passwords, 
raise the limits, raise the amount of cash that could be taken out, these cyber thieves, then over the course of just 12 hours, were able to take $9 million from 2,100 ATMs in 280 cities. Right, it's pretty scary. This was just one bank, one attack, one day, a quarter of a day, in fact. Singularity, as Ray Kurzweil would say, happens when you can't see beyond the event horizon. However, we can see past this one, and I don't think any of us want to experience a global collapse caused by a cyber fraud event, much like happened with Lehman Brothers, especially when it's preventable by simply eliminating usernames and passwords from our lives, along with PIN numbers and things that can be easily counterfeited. For centuries, in fact, since the invention of the concept of identity, the physical identity and digital identity, that is your physical and digital self, the trails that we were listening to earlier, have always been separate concepts. And scientists have searched diligently to try to find a way to converge those two while enabling safeguards for privacy and opt-in to keep a person protected. Today, there finally exist those methods. They're safe, they're easy, they're scalable, and they're very cheap, and they're about to be pervasive in every single device that you have. Imagine opting in by looking into a, a device to board a plane, or to cross a border, or to enter your home, or start your car. Likewise, imagine Imagine looking into your phone and having your identity known, or your laptop, or your tablet. So now we're going to take just a quick second and look at what that new world will look like. Ever since Alexander Graham Bell invented the telephone, the world has been careening towards a singular moment where our digital and physical identities would converge. I believe that our eyes will unlock the world, and I ask you to consider the same today. Da Vinci was right. 